right, and we are off, heading to the New England Card Show. I am not fully confident with the angle that I have you <laughs> at right now, uh, but yeah, so got a little bit of a later start than I wanted, you know, 15, 20 minutes late isn't going to crush anything, um, you know, still going to be there well before the time. I like to get set up early so I can walk around a little bit if I have time, just kind of get my bearings and whatnot, so um, I feel like I'm starting to get this show, setting up at this show down, uh, you know, to an area where it's a little bit more of a streamlined process for myself, but I say that, and this is only my third time setting up, and um, each time's been wildly different. My, my spot's been different, and what I've been seeing for, you know, trends or whatever. Uh, I know last time I was saying how I was surprised, compared to the first time, how much less uh, interest baseball was getting. Now we're into, you know, spring season, uh, spring training and opening day have taken place. So, you know, baseball season is starting. So it'll be interesting to see if that's any different. Uh, obviously we've got the basketball, um, the NBA playoffs are underway. Just I knew it. I knew I was going to drop you. Uh, so the NBA playoffs are, uh, just about here. Uh, so, you know, we'll see if that's got a lot more juice. Obviously, I'm very base basketball heavy. Uh, so, NFL draft is right around the corner. I do have a Leaf draft card of uh, Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. So, it'll be interesting to see if those move. Um, you know, again, they're, they're you know, $1 to $5 cards. Probably closer to $1 than $5. Um, you know, but it'll be interesting to see if there's any interest in those very, very early Anyway, uh, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how, how those move. Um, you know, because those are products that typically don't hold much value. Uh, as soon as anything <laughs> of substance comes out, uh, those are those are reduced. So, anyway, uh, yeah, I've, I've got more stuff in my dollar bin. I've got two dollar bins this time. Usually I only have one. I have sports labeled in my dollar bins rather than just having a kind of uh, jumbled mess. Uh, I try to keep them delineated, but they end up getting jumbled by people anyway. I've got uh, twice the amount of stuff in my half price bin, you know, so more of the, you know, bargain budget type stuff. Uh, I've got more stuff with me to put in the showcases, but uh, the showcases have a uh, limited capacity. So, you know, I've got more inventory than I've had before. So we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, I'm going to be really interested to see how everything is. I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about shows. I was very uh, pleased with the foot traffic last time at the show. So we'll see how it compares. This is Easter weekend. So, um, you know, that could play into stuff. But you never know. The people could also be staying home. And uh, there could be more people looking for something to do before they kick off the Easter festivities. So, uh, you know, I think there's some other religious holidays happening as well. So let's not discredit those. So, yeah, lots of stuff that'll be fun. Uh, you know, it is brighter <laughs> than it was last time. It's not as cold as it was last time. I still brought my coffee. Uh, I planned ahead for that. So learning as we go. Uh, you know, they say third time's a charm, but the first two times have been pretty good. So hopefully uh, this is only better. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of filming at the show. I say that every time I brought my, uh, my setup so I can try to do a little bit of uh, dealer POV type stuff. So we'll see if I, if I succeed or uh, how that's received. So um, yeah. Anyway, let's, let's wrap it up. I'm just gonna hold you. So yeah, that's that's what we got. So we'll, we'll see you there. I'm struggling. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
basketball guy. But it's funny. I, I'll, I'll sell anything, but I collect basketball. Like only basketball. Yeah, so yeah. Like, That's my favorite. <laughs> it's like, Try to get a little bit of the other stuff, but yeah, basketball is just what I love. How's it going? Good, how are you? Are you firm on that price? Um, I could probably, I could probably have a little bit of wiggle room. Where would you be at? Number. Thirty-five. Uh, under forty. Let me check comps real quick. Yep. Yeah, I mean, if, if I you think find, that's, a, if I think you find a comp, there. it is. If I'm off. Is that eight? Yeah, it's an eight. One just sold for 39. Okay. Okay, so the 35 was fair. 35? Yeah. Thank you, there. Appreciate that, man. Yep. Are these your stickers? They are, yep. They're so cool. You want one? Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, it's a half off. Oh, yeah, it's a Kobe one. Which is the Machado? Oh, that's nice. How much? 20, but yeah. it's got a half off. It's a nice one. What do we got? Uh, they're all 20. You got uh, yep, a half price sticker for 40. Awesome stuff. Man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Enjoy. Yeah, all these are half price. Oh, of half the sticker. Five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you do 20 for both of those? Can we get over to TGA and get it graded real fast? Yeah, yeah, I could do that. And what, what's this one? Is that the first day issue? What is this? Yeah, first day issue. Can I take a look? Yep. What's the best you do on that one? Oh boy, that's a good question. Um. Do you have a number in mind? I've had it for for years and years. So sixty bucks. It means everything for eight. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. For all of it. So how about twenty for the whole bunch? Sounds good. Got some pretty cool stuff. I, I spent like probably an hour and a half at this table right here. Right here? Yeah, I see basketball, the, the orange sign. Uh, Luminescent, that one? The Marbury? I don't but know if you did. Yeah, that's the Illuminator. I like the golden, actually, yeah, I like the golden touch too. Front, back, refractor, it's the only way to tell. <laughs> so why don't we, um, do this. I'll pull out, and then if we can just if we can find a number, yeah, yeah, just like Good. pull some stuff out. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can pull out. Yep. Unless there's some stuff where you're like, hey, yeah. listen, like, if, if you point to something, and then I'll, you're like, I'll let you know. Okay, cool. There's some stuff that I'm high on, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, just let me know, honestly. It was awesome. Yeah, it's like how so people, like, easy doing deals. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Nice seeing you again, man. Hopefully you have good luck with those. The ones you don't keep. <laughs> I know, right, dude? That's that's the hardest thing. Right? It is. It is.
All right, uh, so didn't have a chance to do this little recap after the show. It's a couple days later, but uh, I have had the opportunity, the luxury of kind of synthesizing some of my thoughts, so we'll see how uh, concise I can be here. But uh, overall, I felt as though the show went well. Um, it, it, my only perspective in terms of setting up for a dealer's uh, point of view, as <laughs> as you probably know, is just setting up at the show. This is my third time setting up, and I've only set up at this show specifically. So, uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. My view was, you know, despite it being Easter weekend, which I expected would, uh, you know, impact the attendance and, and all that kind of stuff, I felt as though the foot traffic was good. Uh, I, from my perspective, again, it was better than the last two shows that I've set up at. Uh, I've, I set up in a different location each time, so I don't know how that may have uh, impacted things, but it was good. And uh, I was seeing almost everybody that came up to the table, uh, and I was hearing other dealers say that most of the people that came up to their tables were cash buyers, which is different uh, and for a lot of dealers, a welcome change. Uh, There's only like a couple of people that were looking to trade uh, or even inquiring about trading. And they were mostly younger kids that, uh, you know, they came up and they said, you know, are you looking to trade or buy? And uh, they just showed me modern stuff. They weren't actually interested in anything on my booth. They were actually just trying to sell their cards uh, at the end of the day. So, uh, which is totally fine didn't have any issues with, uh, you know, multiple people asking me to participate in the trade-up challenge. Uh, that was definitely something that I saw in the last show. I uh, did not see that this time. Not to say that it's, you know, gone, but, um, you know, I've got, that's a different topic for a different day. <laughs> so, um, a lot of the people that were buying we're buying smaller dollar items uh not only at my booth but i was hearing that from other dealers as well uh, a lot of people digging in bargain bins dollar bins stuff like that uh you know i definitely had a good mix of stuff selling from you know i have the showcase that has all graded stuff i have a showcase that has all raw stuff and then i have the the bargain bin so you know you've seen the setup and I, I had a good mix, but it was definitely less stuff from the showcase than the prior two shows, a lot more stuff from the dollar bin and the bargain bin. But I increased, as we talked about, uh, the amount of that inventory that I had. So that was that was good to see that, you know, at least I'm <laughs> keeping up with the trends there and, and what customers want. So uh, yeah, it, it went well for me. Talking to some other dealers that set up at other shows, people weren't overly uh, enthusiastic. They said that, you know, it was kind of low in terms of a turnout and uh, there are other shows that are better. But this is a fairly young show. You know, it's really, uh, I think only had five, we've had five shows at this location. Uh, you know, I've set up at three of them and I've walked two of them. So the other ones that they're comparing them to are, you know, long established multi-year shows. So you're, you know, you're gonna expect that this one will build up over time, or at least I expect that. Uh, from my perspective, it's already building up very quickly. We're hearing a lot more noise about it. Uh, a lot more people are anticipating it, talking about coming, talking about traveling, all that good stuff. So uh, that's great. And then, you know, one of the big calling cards is, you know, it's a stone's throw from the Basketball Hall of Fame. And after the show, we went over there, uh, you know, I helped out running mics and, and doing some stuff there. If you didn't catch the, uh, the hobby talk that uh, there was what five panelists and, and Rob, sports card therapist, was the MC. Uh, check out the live that Rob posted. So if you, if you want to hear what was said or want to check out who was there and all that kind of stuff, you can see that over on his IG channel. He was streaming it live. And uh, I'm not sure, but I think he probably is going to if he hasn't already talked a little bit about that in his podcast. So, so take a look for, for all of that uh, from him. But uh, that was more sparsely attended than the uh, first one. So this is the only the second time they've done it. Uh, there was definitely much fewer people there in the audience but good questions uh you know and really actually some some better questions than the first time in my uh, opinion i think a little bit more thought provoking and the panelists did a really good job of of digging deep to give some insights so i thought that was good you know everybody kind of took a turn answering and taking a shot at, at giving some other insights into the question so that was that was good and then the trade night absolutely unbelievable location you know i can't say that enough for a trade night but uh you know sparsely attended 
compared to the others, there have been multiple trade nights there. Uh, each one seems to have gotten bigger ex with this exception. And I really think that was uh, a victim of the weekend, you know, the holiday weekend and, and people had plans and people wanted to do other things. So um, they'll be very eagerly anticipating seeing what the turnout is for the next trade night. I expect it to kind of pick right back up where it left off. But, you know, time will tell. It'll be a June show, so a lot of eyes already are looking towards national. But, you know, I would expect that that's going to just continue, that more people are going to be looking towards national. So we will we'll see what June looks like. I'm not sure yet if I'll be setting up a, 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 the show in June or not. I really don't know what my schedule looks like <laughs> that far out. But, uh, you know, time will tell if, uh, if I'll be setting up. Time will tell what the trade night looks like. A lot of good stuff. You know, I, I could go into a lot more depth here about uh, different individual interactions but um you know there were there were some interesting ones but basically uh you you saw half i think of of the interactions on uh i don't know maybe half maybe a little bit less uh but yeah i, I tried to film as much as possible but you know i'm i'm new to this whole setting up and vlogging so if you have experience setting up as a dealer and and filming it and you have any tips that you can give me to help um, you know, I'm all ears. I would love to, to learn how to, how to do it better and provide something that is, is better than, than this first go around. But you know, I'm a rookie. So that's, uh, what I was able to do, <laughs> but, uh, always looking to improve. So if this is something that you like, if you like that dealer POV, uh, you know, I'm happy to do that again the next time I set up and, um, you know, like I said, continue to, to improve at that. So. Uh, you know, it's always fun chatting with you in the car on the drive. Figured we'd keep that, uh, keep that style. People seem to uh, enjoy that that switch up. So happy to do that, uh, as long as I don't get too distracted while I'm driving, right? But yeah, the, uh, like I said, you probably get about half of the experience uh, from my perspective. The biggest deal that I made was really at the end of the day, which is a, a guy who I made my first deal with at National in Atlantic City, and we've made a deal each subsequent show here. So we're familiar with working together. Um, we're comfortable working together, and it's it's really easy to, to work with somebody that you've got that familiarity with because we can just kind of get down to brass tacks and uh, really, you know, hammer out a deal that's going to make both of us happy and we're both comfortable with. So that's, that's ultimately the best place to be is making a deal that both parties are happy and comfortable making. And then everybody wins at the end of the day. You know, I put some stuff, get some cash that I can bring with me to national and he got some cards that he can do with as he pleases. Probably going to resell them is what he's, he's been setting up on whatnot, I think is what he does. So, uh, yeah, that's, that was the big deal. Um, you know, there's some, there are some bigger deals that happened really before the show even started. So I obviously didn't have my camera on before the show started, but, um, you know, those might be some things that I try to incorporate next time. We'll see. Like I said, still learning, uh, love any feedback on that. But, um, yeah, there were a couple of, of more, you know, terse interactions. There's one guy who said that he sets up as a dealer at other shows and, uh, you know, wanted me to, to want some of his cards and it's just not stuff that I collect. And he was a little bit disgruntled that I'm only looking to get cards that I want for my collection. Um, he was there with his wife and his wife was like, well, you know, he's a collector, you know, you're a dealer. You guys have different perspectives, which was interesting hearing that come from her. You know, he's a guy, according to himself anyway, that has been in the hobby for decades and she's brand new to it, but she's got kind of that... <laughs> more realistic perspective that I think uh, some of us hold that, you know, there's different focuses and different uh, ways of enjoying the hobby, enjoying cards. And mine is by building my collection. So the stuff that I make available is stuff that I don't need in my collection anymore. And the stuff that I want to get are things that I would like to have in my collection. And he didn't have any of that. So, uh, you know, that was, that was one of the more standout interactions uh, on the not so positive, but the majority were overwhelmingly positive interactions so um i did end up making a deal with him but you know uh, again if, if it was a more positive interaction he probably could have gotten a better deal from me <laughs> in all honesty you know and that's that's true of you know i think human nature in general right is um if you treat people nicely and uh you know the way that you would like them to treat you in return uh it tends to make everything a little bit easier and it makes people want to work with you a little bit more so when uh, somebody's really not 
that pleasant to. All right, phone cut out on me, so uh, I don't know where it cut out, but yeah, uh, now, that, now that I'm here, we'll sit in the parking lot and uh, and chat for a minute. So uh, yeah, ended up making a deal with that guy, um, but yeah, treat people nicely it tends to work out better for you at at card shows. But overall, like I said, uh, good experience. Uh, the hobby chat was great. Um, really looking forward to the next one. Uh, and yeah, starting to get more of my focus on national, but, um, you know, going to be excited for the June show again, not sure if I'm going to set up, not sure if I'm going to be able to go at all. Uh, I really don't know my schedule that far out, but overall good show. Uh, what I'm seeing seems to be, uh, you know, good indications of the future. I'm, I'm where my proud Beckett 10 slab. So we'll see how that goes in the future. Uh, that's one thing I didn't mention. Of the graded stuff that I had, I had slabs, mostly PSA. I had a couple BGS, um, a couple of CSG, a couple of SGC. Uh, and I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, going off the top of my head, the only ones I moved were PSA. I know there was some interest and a couple of the BGS slabs. Um, yeah, I'm 95% I'm sure that we didn't move any of the BGS slabs. So, um, yeah. Those were the only ones that moved PSA. Uh, the CSG ones, the people liked the cards in the slabs, had no interest in, in you know, paying anything for uh, th those slabs, uh, which is unfortunate. I think they're great looking slabs, but I understand that. Um, and the SGC ones, uh, yeah, they didn't get any interest. So uh, that seems to be a continuing theme. And uh, I'll be interested to see how that plays out at the National. The National seems to be a little bit different when it comes to slab cards um in terms of what people have in their inventory but also like you know it seems like there's more stuff that moves just because of the card that's in the slab rather than the slab itself but yeah definitely be interesting so that's um just mention that because i have the shirt on so anyway i'm starting to get some weird looks sitting here talking to myself in the car so uh that that's enough for now if you have any questions let me know uh happy to answer any questions maybe we can do a little um what do we call it the collector office hours you know, if there's any questions I can answer, uh, maybe we do it that way. So shoot me a comment, shoot me a DM if you've got any questions for any other insights from the show. But overall, had a great experience, always do, uh, and expect that to continue and the show to keep growing and getting bigger and better.